This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me today is Michael Zara. He is the president and CEO of Drone Delivery Canada. It's a publicly traded company. I got two symbols for you, FLT on the TSX Venture and TAKOF on the OTCQX. Michael, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Great to have you on. So it's been about two and a half years since our last interview. That is, that's a lifetime. It's a it lifetime is, it is. at this point. It is, yeah. So, uh, you know, that was the last time we did an interview with, with management from Drone Delivery. A lot's changed, but we don't have to go through each individual thing, but I thought maybe we could start off with maybe a description of some of the highlights of the last 12 months or so. Sure, so I started with the company uh, end of 2018 and really uh, my focus and, and the focus of the company in the last say 12 or 18 months has really been to commercialize the business. Uh, so we've done that in 2019, that's behind us. Uh, and it really means you know, hiring all the functions you need to run an operating business versus a, a startup business, all the processes and policies and, and functions in place. So that's, that's done as I mentioned. And then uh, we signed an arrangement, uh, an agreement, a 10-year agreement with Air Canada as a reseller uh, to help us go to market. We also have the right to go to market directly. Uh, and also we started signing customers in 2019 and came into 2020 with a, a bit of a backlog and we're now implementing them and we're now fully operational and we're now generating revenue. So uh, quite a few things have happened in the last 12, 18 months. Revenues, baby. We love revenues. Revenue is good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's take a quick step back. So for those who may have missed our interview from two and a half years ago, uh, I invite everybody to go and, and check that one out. You know, I think, I think it was pretty good. Um, I have to ask, you know, how is your company unique and different compared to some of your peers out there? Yeah, I, mean, I don't want to sound naive or, or arrogant when I talk about my competitors, um, but I would say we're, we're way ahead of them. Uh, I've heard from other regulators in, in other countries and, and other people that we're talking to. We're probably two or three years ahead of our regulators, and there's a few differences. I would say the big difference is how we approach the technology and how we approach the market. And we are, we're not a drone company, uh, contrary to the name. We are a managed service logistics company. So while others focused on the drone, we focused on the system and what the customers need and what the market needs. So as a result, we've got a system that's very uh, deep and very broad in its ability to address a variety of use cases. And also our system is airframe agnostic. So we're not tied to one drone like some of our competitors have. They've got one drone, you know, lots of, you know, neat YouTube videos, but it doesn't really have any breadth. It doesn't really have any runway. Our system uh, has three drones in our current fleet, but also the ability to uh, adapt and integrate other drones from other companies or even manned fixed wing or manned rotary wing aircraft from other companies uh, that we can integrate into our system. So very, very different approach as a managed service and really focus on the system opposed to uh, just one drone in a, in a small fleet that might be you know, short range or small payload. Very, very different. So I want to I wanna go back a little bit to what you were saying in, in our first question and answer there about, you know, how you in 2019 was kind of the year of starting to commercialize and generate revenues. What were some of the processes in place or what were the, the inflection points that you were waiting for that then resulted in that? And where do you see the potential growth from there? Sure. So we felt that the company was far enough along in terms of having the technology uh, more than proven uh, very successfully, a number of successful proof of concept projects in the field. Uh, we had the regulatory certification since I think 2017. We felt we were at a point where now it's time to go to market in a, in a proper operating company way. Uh, so we have the ability to go directly to market uh, to deal with customers directly. We also wanted to accelerate that by bringing on somebody who could act as a, as a reseller in Canada initially, because we're Canadian based, but then also internationally. Uh, so we partnered with, with Air Canada. So, um, and then started signing customers and implementing and, and generating revenues I mentioned. So really 
the, the catalyst to, to commercialize and go operational was the fact that we had sufficiently tested technology, proof of concept, regulatory approval, et cetera. And, and you know, we've been doing that over the last you know, many years and really ready to hit the market. So as you said, you joined the company back in at the end of 2018. You were then right. named CEO in June 2019. You know, what was your background prior to joining Drone Delivery? Right. So I actually had a relationship with Drone Delivery. Um, you know, in my past life, I was president of uh, Staples Business Advantage, which is the, the B2B side of, of Staples, separate from the, from the retail side. So we had actually done a proof of concept. It was actually the first e-commerce delivery from a real customer for a real order from a real company, uh, not just a, a pilot. And uh, we did that successfully uh, a few years ago. So I had a relationship with, uh, with Drone Delivery Canada as a result. I stayed in touch. I'm an engineer. Uh, so I, I liked the technology, I liked what they were doing, and, uh, and we sat down one day and they wanted to move the business forward to commercialize and operational, and they felt that they wanted to bring somebody in that had more of an operational background versus a, you know, a pure startup type background, because it's a very different business running a small startup and, and, and running now a, a scalable uh, soon to be global commercial business. So uh, there was a good fit for my background. I've got an engineering degree, uh, MBA in international business, and, uh, and a P-log, which is logistics. Um, so it was a good fit with my academic as well as my experience, and, uh, and we ended up um, getting together. <laughs> Perfect. All right. And, and so my next question for you is, uh, is where drone delivery is at today, is that, is that where you more or less envisioned the company to be at this point thus far, notwithstanding some of the COVID-19 setbacks, of course? Sure, um, and, I, and I can talk to COVID and uh, you know after in a second because it's definitely uh, you know changed uh, the industry, but I, I would say we are where we expected we would be. Um, you know, it's a highly regulated industry, uh, you know, just like you know aviation is, healthcare is, and that's you know that's normal. That's expected for the purposes of safety and, and these sort of things. Um, but one thing that's very good uh, is the fact that we have a very strong relationship and very collaborative relationship with Transport Canada. Um, and that's a very, very important place to be uh, where we are in that relationship. Also, I mean, it's easy for us to complain about the government all the time, but I would say that Transport Canada is very innovative, genuinely wants to move the industry forward. So we're actually quite pleased with what the industry is doing under the direction of Transport Canada and Nav Canada. So I think we're, you know, we're moving forward at the pace that we expected. We think we're moving forward at a reasonable pace, but still doing new things. Uh, so we probably are where we where we where we should be, uh, and there's new things coming with BVLOS, new regulation draft regulations that are being worked on right now. So the industry does continue to move forward in the in the right way, I think. Um, if I can talk to uh, you know coronavirus for a second, so I mean, obviously the pandemic is a bad thing. Uh, of course, we wish it didn't happen, but it has certainly raised the profile of of the company and the industry. Uh, prior to the pandemic, there were really two broad use cases, and that was remote community access, whether indigenous or not, and where time was of the essence, uh, you know, time critical deliveries, whether they're in healthcare or, or commercial industrial, where, where time is money. And as a result of the pandemic, two new use cases have come to light, and that's um, where uh, a community or a hospital or a medical lab or a, a long-term care center uh, wants to limit person-to-person -person contact. So if you want to limit person-to-person -person contact, but you want to keep the supply chain open, drone delivery is a perfect solution for that. The second uh, application, so the fourth use case as a result of the, uh, of the pandemic that's come to light is companies examining their business continuity and their disaster recovery plans and realizing they don't have a backup to their supply chain. And they're wishing that they had looked at drone delivery uh, in the past and in the future, they're saying, well, maybe it's something that I have on a retainer uh, as part of my disaster recovery plan, the same way I might have a retainer relationship with a company who's got a diesel generator for backup electricity as an example. So those two new use cases have come about as a, as a result of the pandemic. And we've definitely had quite a lot of activity with the federal government, the provincial government, healthcare, 
uh, broadly defined as hospitals and, and uh, long-term care centers and, and testing labs and also with First Nations communities. So it's definitely raised the profile of the company and generated a lot of activity uh, for drone delivery. So then from what you can tell us, what, what would you say are the one to two things that investors should look for uh, from the company? I guess, it, I guess it's more commercialization, more JVs, you know, what, what, what are some of those things? Well, I think, you know, the, the revenue started in, in Q1 for us. So it's, it's recent um, and we're still growing our customer base. We're still implementing new customers that we announced and we've got a rather robust funnel uh, so hopefully we'll see some new announcements of new customers coming, uh, coming in the next little while. But I think that was a major transition uh, for the company, going from a startup to fully commercialized, fully operational, now generating revenue. So I would say you know, that's number one. Number two, uh, we're primarily focused in Canada today, and we'll see you know, more traction and hopefully more announcements in the next little while about new projects. But, you know, we are having conversations with other companies outside of Canada uh, who we could partner with as a licensing arrangement. Um, so I think we'll see growth within Canada. I think you see more revenue within Canada. I think you see more diverse kinds of customers in different vertical markets in Canada. And then you'll also see some activity internationally. So we're very, very excited about uh, what we've built. We're not just building a company. We've actually built the industry. And uh, we're not just Canadian or a great Canadian success story, but uh, you know, we're, we're built for global scale as well. And I think people will see that in the, in the next little while. And with that, Michael, where can my audience go and find more information about Drone Delivery Canada? Uh, we're all over social media. So if you go to LinkedIn or Twitter or Instagram or Facebook and you search for Drone Delivery Canada, you'll find us there. Or you can go directly to the website at dronedeliverycanada.com and there's uh, videos, there's press releases, there's information on the system. Um, but yeah, social media or the website and you can get everything. Well, with that, Michael, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Stay safe. Good luck. And uh, I look forward to our next update. Thanks very much for having you. Appreciate it.